Last episode, we had an overview of new and enhanced capabilities uh, in this release set as part of the operations offering in PRISM. In this episode, we're going to focus on the pro tier of that offering and examine some of those new and enhanced features along with the demo. Just for a recap, in the 2020.A, uh, operations tiers in PRISM expands to uh, a, a much broader of the abilities that includes uh, SQL Server monitoring, NAN AOS virtual infrastructures uh, monitoring, as well as the cost information and the automatic application discovery. We also enhance the machine learning and the operation automation platform cross play to give our customer much more broad uh, capabilities around the operations. So this episode, let's focus on the pro tier of the features. Let's start with crossplay, most popular features in the last year. The reason it becomes popular because it's very, very simple, yet and very powerful. It starts with uh, a trigger coming from alerts, events, or even a menu in the UI, all from the third party systems. And then you can define sequence of actions without much of coding and to re respond to those trigger condition. Customers has been leveraged that um, to automate their operation uh, tasks. In the last 30 days of Rome, we have seen uh, the usage of clause play increase about 50% among our customers. In 2020.a, we expand the capabilities I was saying to introduce uh, the so-called conditional branch support. In the past, the playbook is, is a straightforward sequential action sequence. Um, but there is a certain use case that, that, that requires that you have different action sequence uh, because of different status. For example, if you have approval um, status comes in, you may decide to have a different actions uh, if it is being approved or being denied. So the branch support in the playbook is going to help you to enable that. We also introduce uh, a few more actions, including string parser actions that allow you to extract the value from a, a previous REST API call or script call so that you can, using those values, pass on to the following actions or use that as a condition to determine which branch to go. As the playbook becomes more and more critical in the productions, and we do need a way to uh, back up those playbooks. So for that, we introduced import and export capabilities. And you can also use that to move the playbook from one PC instance to another PC instance in the future, I uh, can enable the collaborations uh, in a developer communities. Now let's take a look how all this work together in a, in a product environment. Now let's start with uh, how do we detect the over provision VA. Now among the customers, there, there becomes a very common um, scenario that uh, they will have certain VMs that can be idle for a while, but will have a large amount of transaction happen, let's say uh, once every two months. Or they have those VMs just migrated from the other environment. Therefore, in the short period of time, you have um, a very high CPU uh, usage, which is not necessarily a normal pattern. In the past, we would detect those VM as is over provision and has abnormalities and that create uh, some noise. In this release, now the customer can choose to exclude certain VMs uh, from the VM efficiency detections or from the anomaly detections. So that will uh, reduce the uh, noise level of the signals. So that's one enhancement. But the most interesting thing is uh, we make the whole uh, automation process becomes more robust, more powerful by introducing the conditional branch. In the 517 uh, What's New episode, uh, we demonstrate a use case that uh, we can quickly create automation that do the VM right sizing uh, between the VM owners and the operators. So let's quickly take a look at what we did before. So in this case, we're going to uh, trigger a uh, over provision detections. Once it triggers, the VM owner will receive a notification. So in this case, we're using Slack to inform that 
uh, now you can uh, ask him for a, a memory reductions uh, if uh, you want uh, to have the VM size uh, reduced, right? So now here we reduce, we, we got the information. And then the VM owner just need to go to the VM, and in this case, shut down the VMs, um, and that will trigger a ticket in the third-party ticket system, such as ServiceNow, or any other IT system, and the operator can go there to approve the process. So let's take a look um, what we're going to see here. So here's the you know, ticket system we built for the demo, and you can see we just received an open ticket. In the past, what the operator can do is they can approve the, uh, the uh, request, and the whole process uh, will trigger and the VM will automate downsize and power on and will inform the VM owner. Now, but what about uh, the, for some cases the operator would decide to uh, deny the request? Maybe uh, it's not the right maintenance window. Maybe it's not approved by you know application owners. Right? Um, what if when you deny um, you cannot go through the VM downsize process, but have to instead inform the owner that request be denied. So you have a different automation process based on the status of your approval. So how do we do that? In the past, you probably won't be able to do that unless you create a different playbook and take a different uh, trigger. And in this case, the webhook trigger have a different call. But in this release, all you can do is to pass in the status of approval and the playbook itself can base on the status of approval to determine what actions it will execute. So let's see what happened. So first, let's deny the process, uh, request. What's going to happen is the VM owner will receive a notification that your request is denied. Right. So that's one uh, procedures. And the operator can also choose to approve the request. In this case, the VM owner will receive a notification once the VM uh, has been uh, reduced, uh, has the memory has been reduced and the power on. So here we go. We got uh, another uh, information. Let's go back, take a look at the VM. The VM reduced from the four gigabytes to three gigabytes. So the whole process is based on whether what is the status of the approval. So how do we do that uh, in the playbook? It's actually pretty simple. In the playbook, we introduce two things to make the whole thing happen. One is we introduce uh, we call it a string parser. What it is is it can take a uh, uh, a return from a previous call or return from a triggers, interpret the uh, return based on whether it's JSON, or XML, or strings, you can use in multiple ways to extract the values and make that as a, a parameter that can be used by uh, the actions uh, layers. So that's the first thing. And second things, we introduce the branch concept in the playbook. In this case, we had a branch, and the branch we use the approval status to determine which uh, actions uh, playbook is going to execute. If it's approved, it's going to do the regular process, reduce the memory, uh, power the VM, and inform the VM owner. But if the request is denied, it will only do the, inf uh, the notification to the VM owner. So now you can base on different values from either trigger or from uh, your system status uh, can determine what kind of action you can take. Uh, it's a it's a very simple um, concept, it could, but it can be very very powerful when a customer to design their automation uh, to make their operation becomes much more efficient. The next episode, we're going to continue our journey on the uh, pro tier of the new and enhanced capabilities. So stay tuned.